Hello friends, this video on metals and non-metals part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So the next property of metal is ductility. Now it is also a little similar to malleability but in this case it is the ability of metals to be drawn into thin wires. Now when we talk about malleability we were talking about thin sheets like the aluminium sheet. But when we say wires, it is like uh, you can say the wires for your electricity conduction, the copper wires. So that means it is made up of copper. So the copper has been drawn into thin wires. So that property of copper is called ductility. So you would have seen copper wires, aluminium wires. In fact, gold, silver, all of them can be drawn into thin wires. You would be surprised to know that a wire of 2 kilometer length can be drawn from 1 gram of gold. So if you take 1 gram gold, you taking that 1 gram gold, you can draw it to form a wire which is 2 kilometer in length. So just imagine how long is that going to be. Yes, and that is why gold is said to be the most ductile metal. So gold has highest malleability, gold has highest ductility. That is why it is used for um, designing ornaments. Copper wires are used for wiring purposes in terms of carrying electricity. Now, as I said, these uh, metals are also very good conductors. So there are two advantages of using copper wires. One is copper can be drawn into wires. Secondly, copper can conduct electricity. Aluminium wires are used for fencing or binding things. So fencing field or uh, fencing the boundary. So for those purposes, aluminium wires are very commonly used. The next property is metals are very good conductors of heat that is they allow heat to pass through them. Just think of your utensils and you will understand it all. So all the cooking utensils are made up of metals. For example, you will you would see aluminium utensils. You would also see utensils made of steel. And what is steel? Steel is nothing but Steel contains, if you look at the composition of steel, it contains mostly iron with small amount of carbon. And what is iron? Iron is nothing but a metal. However, carbon is a non-metal. But steel majorly contains carbon, majorly contains iron. So uh, that makes steel uh, uh, suitable for cooking purposes. In fact, aluminium utensils are also found and they are also uh, very suitable for uh, cooking. The non-stick uh, utensils which you see these days, non-stick fry pan and non-stick bowl and etc. So these non-stick uh, utensils are also made up of metal. It is just that they have a Teflon coating on their top but otherwise they are also made up of metals. So since they are good conductors of heat, so what are they able to do? So when you put your utensil over uh, the fire, what happens? The utensil doesn't burn or the utensil doesn't melt because it is able to conduct the heat to the object or to the food item which is placed on the utensil for cooking. So that's how it is allowing the heat to get conducted and it is allowing the heat to reach the food item and that is how it helps in cooking. The next property is high melting point. Metals also have very high melting and boiling points and that is why even when they are heated they do not melt easily or they do not start boiling. So that is also one advantage why metal utensils are used for cooking. So the same thing here also. Now when you uh, want to prepare food so you keep the food items, maybe vegetables and everything in the utensil and you put it on fire. Now, had the metal been having a very low melting point, in that case, what would have happened? The vessel itself would have melted. But that doesn't happen because metals have very high melting point. In fact, the metal with the highest a melting point is tungsten and that is why tungsten is used in the filament of bulbs. So tungsten is used in filaments of bulb. Now why tungsten is used in the filament of bulb? Because you can see 
the electric electricity so whenever you switch on the bulb so the bulb glows that is electric current passes through to the bulb now such a huge amount of current passes reaches the bulb so it produces a huge amount of heat and light energy so the if the metal has a low melting point then what will happen the metal will become will start melting at that high temperature so we need a metal which has a very high melting point so that it doesn't melt when the bulb glows because the temperature inside the bulb is very very high so that is the purpose why tungsten has been chosen to make the filament of bulb Sodium and potassium on the other hand have very low mold melting point so they should never be used in uh, such kind of things because they get they start to melt very easily so as soon as you heat them even little uh, heating them a little bit will make them a lot reactive that is why sodium if even if you bring fire near sodium or you keep it at a, a little high temperature there are chances that sodium might catch fire so sodium and potassium have very low melting points thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.